welcome to Uncommonly Good MTG. I am your host, Dr. Severus Montague. Yukon suck it. Yeah, you can just call me Yukon. That's totally cool. I am broadcasting to you from my hidden underground headquarters somewhere north of the Tropic of Cancer. And I'm bringing to you today a deck that I picked up over at, let's see where I got this thing from today, uh, MTG Arena Zone uh, called Mardu Midrange. So yeah, I was taking a look at what they had there. I found a page where they had, uh, what is it, the standard best of deck rankings. I was just trying to see what was, what was counting. Number one was Rakdos Anvil, right? Now, I've never played Rakdos Anvil, mostly because I think it's a horrible, stupid card. I Not not because it's actually bad, but just because it doesn't fit Dr. Suck It. I don't know why. I just don't like it. It kind of reminds me of um, uh, with that, that the, the Black Cat and the Witch's Cauldron combo. God, I hated that so badly. So uh, I've stayed away from Rakdos Anvil because of it. I'll probably have to play it sometime just to say that I had, but... Man, it just it just rubs me the wrong way. But I was looking down the list, right? And it goes Rakdos Ambo, Esper Midrange, Naya Runes, Angels. When I got the Angels, I'm like, ooh, let's go see what Angels look like, right? So I'm a big lover of Angel decks. But yeah, it's the, it's the same kind of Angel decks that I've been playing. And then we get down to number five, and it's Mardo Midrange, right? And I'm like, Mardo Midrange? Well, you know, I, I played, I just haven't really played a whole lot in the Mardu area there. And uh, I can't say I'm really familiar with playing against people that have been doing it. So I decided to take a look, and I thought, yeah, it looks interesting. I haven't played it. I haven't seen it. Let's go ahead and uh, take that deck, put it up, and uh, box it around a little bit, see how well it does. Now, it, apparently it's considered number five in the standard archetype right now, in the standard list. So I'm expecting it's going to do very well. Uh, but... Uh, Let's take a look at it, and then we'll go see if the big money where its mouth's at. So we got at uh, the low end here, Luminarch Aspirant. You know, someday Luminarch Aspirant will be gone. It'll it'll be a weird day when Luminarch Aspirant isn't in standard, and white decks will have no idea what to put in themselves just by default. But that day is September, uh, and as of right now, you know, there she is. Holding up her mace, lighting the way. So there she is. You get a 1-1 one, one for 2, and then every turn, at, at the beginning of combat, like clockwork, she puts a counter on a target creature you control. We got the Tenacious Underdog. And this guy is a 3-2 two for 2, and that's all there is to him for the most part. I mean, other than that, then from your graveyard, you can blitz him. And blitzing, you have to pay two life uh, and pay four. Really kind of expensive. But on the other hand, you can keep pulling this guy over and over again for as much as you can. We got uh, Valky, God of Lies. Now, there is red in this deck specifically for two cards. Uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, a.k.a. Kikijiki, and Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter. But I can never make it all the way up to seven. It is so rare because I can tell you, when I got two black, I got a black and something else, and I got a Valky in my hand, I'm pretty much playing Valky. Because there's just a an infinite multitude of what your opponent can have in their hands that you might be able to go to well before seven that would be super cool to play. So, uh, yeah, I'm probably not playing Tybalt. Probably don't need the red. We're just going to Valky it, most likely. We get into Humiliate. Now, I kind of wish that Humanity was more of like a removal, but it's got a lot of cool stuff to it. Target opponent reveals their hand, so you get to see what's in their hand. You choose a non land card from it. That player discards that card. Yeah, that's it. So suck it, card. Uh, and then you put a plus one plus counter on a creature you control. Awesome. So yeah, that, that's pretty good. I mean, it's not fantastic. You get a custom to, you could tell them which card to discard, and you get to put a plus one counter on something. We only got one of them in here, though. So I'm not exactly sure why it's in here. Just, just just, one card. Just like, hey, let's just put that in there. We got uh, Vanishing Verse. We got three of those. Those guys are great. Hopefully we won't run across too many multicolored things that we want to get rid of. 
there is a lot of them now. I'm kind of thinking that like Blood Chieftain's Curse is probably a better card. Uh, we got the Meat Hook Massacre, which will potentially wipe the board, at least up to negative X, negative X, if it will. And then after that, <clears throat> you gain life whenever an opponent's creature dies, and they lose life whenever one of your creatures dies. So hopefully you'll be able to use that Tenacious Underdog over and over again and pay that two life because you will gain life as their creatures die. Uh, has Blitz in it? Uh, Blitz, I think, is a something you have to do at the beginning of your upkeep or no, on your turn when you attack. I don't think you could do it like uh, defensively. And yeah, we'll see. All right, we got the Skyclave Apparition, who does not fly. I'm always surprised by that. Uh, but they, they it's a core spirit. It costs three to put out a 2-2. Two, two. And when it comes out, you get to exile up to one target non-land, non-token permanent, which can be something other than a creature. It just has to be non-land and non-token. So it could be a planeswalker, enchantment, artifact, lots of stuff. And it has to have a mana value of four or less. And when this guy dies or you know is exiled, whatever happens, um, that the exiled card's owner creates an XX blue illusion creature token where X is the mana value of the exiled card. So you get a token out of the deal. I was just thinking you could potentially use it on yourself, like one of your own guys, to, to if you need a delay, because then she could block and then the next thing would block. But it's hard to say. Uh, okay, so we've got uh, Graveyard Trespasser. Three for three, it's a three, three for three, which is really good for black. And it's got Ward as well, which is fantastic. Uh, but whenever it enters the battlefield of tax, you ex exile up to one target card from a graveyard, which means all of those uh, flashback cards are targets for this thing to pretty much get rid of. And then they can't play them anymore. So suck it. Uh, if a creature's card is exiled this way, each opponent loses one life and you gain a life. There's a lot there. There's a lot going on on Graveyard Trespasser. Graveyard Glutton is a 4-4 four, four, and same amount of ward. And instead of doing one card, you exile to two target cards. And once again, it's for each creature card exiled that way. Each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So it's two instead of one. And you get a 4-4 four, four rather than 3-3. Three, three. So Graveyard Trespasser is pretty top-notch. We got the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So you get a 2-2 Red Shaman. Whenever it attacks, you get a Treasure Token. On the next turn, you discard up to two cards. If you do, you draw that many cards. I haven't seen any sort of like a reanimation going on yet, so I don't know how good that is. And then on the last turn, you get to create a token that's a copy of another target non-legendary creature you control, except that it has haste. You sacrifice it at the end of the next turn. At the next at the beginning of the next end step. Now it costs you one. So legendary though, and that's not a creature. That's non-legendary. So we got some things. Ooh, Skyclave Apparition would probably help quite a bit. That would basically convert any of your opponent's stuff into tokens. All right, so we got the Celestis. I always want to call it the Cletus, but it's the Celestis. People love the Celestis. I... I'm not as big of a fan. I kind of like more. I like um, Cosmos Elixir better. Uh, I don't know why. I just it just it's more Doctor Suckett than the Celestis is. There's just a there's a lot of weird mechanics that I feel that that operates about as good as that weird stuff in the picture is. Kind of jagged and circly, and you kind of get stuff, but it's all kind of haphazard. But uh, yeah, you can basically for three, you get the ability to put one man of any color. Great, and then. Also, you can then change it from night to day all the time. Great. And you, you know, it says that whenever it comes, night becomes day or day becomes night, you gain a life. Super. And then you may draw a card, and if you do, discard a card. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot there, and you're getting more than what the Cosmos Elixir. It just, I don't know, I, I understand the Cosmos Elixir. I feel it in my soul. All right, we got Legion Angel. And along with Legion Angel, we got on the sideboard three more Legion Angels. Because it is a 4-3 for 4, and then whenever it comes into play, you can go and get another Legion Angel from outside of the game, aka the sideboard, and put it into your hand. Which means you're playing Legion Angel, Legion Angel, Legion Angel, Legion Angel, and then you, you kind of run out of Legion Angels. Now, if you've got the uh, Reflection of Kiki Jiki going on, 
guess what you could do? You could create more Legion Angels. And that might be good, because I can tell you, Angels are always awesome. We got the uh, Primo Star of White Control, the Wandering Emperor, who for four can flash into play and use any of her abilities. Which generally, I mean, you could do any of them. I can imagine scenarios where they might all be good. Plus one to get a plus one, plus one counter on up to one target creature against first strike. That little trick kills lots of things. Uh, you can create a 2-2 two -two white samurai token with vigilance, which you could slam that guy out, which he might block and kill something, which I've been killed. I've had multiple dudes killed because of that trick. Lastly, this is the, usually a surefire one. Exile target, tap creature, you gain two life. That's a big hit to what the Wandering Emperor can do, because that leaves her at a one. But uh, yeah, if you need her to do that, she will perform that trick for you. We got the Hagra, Hagra Maul Mauling, a lot of vowels there, um, which destroys target creature. Super, costs you four, I'm, I'm down with that. Uh, and if you happen to be in a pinch and need some black mana, there you go. Uh, we got Elspeth Respendent, two of her. She has five for loyalty, and what does she do? Choose up to one target creature, put a plus one counter, and counter and a counter from amongst flying first strike lifelink or vigilance onto it so you get a you get to give a lot to a dude one of your guys potentially then uh for negative three you look at the top seven cards of your library you may put a permanent card with mana value of three or less from amongst them into the battlefield with a shield counter on it then put the rest on the bottom of your library in random orders from top seven cards three or less mana value would be celestis Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Graveyard Trespasser, Skyclave Apparition, Meadook Massacre, Valky God of Lies, Tenacious Underdog, or Luminarch Aspirant. Aspirant, Aspirant. So she can, there's a lot of things that are three and under your deck. Look at, look at the, it's over half of your deck, is that way? Uh, let's see, last thing at negative seven, which you just have to pump up two or three levels, three if you want her to live beyond it. You can create five, three, three angel creature tokens with flying that is a lot that is that is a lot that's 15 points of damage someone would have to wipe the board to make that not worrisome i have yet to see it happen but you know she's only been around for a few weeks now and uh she, i think she's got a lot of potential we'll see we got a legendary creature we got uh what is it just one of her lysa the forgotten archangel Flying, lifelink, 4-5, costs you 5 to put out. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. If a creature an opponent control would die, you exile instead. Suck it, other people's creatures. We got Eganjo, see the Empire, which does 4 points of damage to attacking or blocking creature. We got Hive of the Eye Tyrant, which turns into a 3-3 Beholder creature with Menace that will allow you to exile target card from defending player's graveyard. Get rid of those flashback guys or anything that's coming back on its own. Uh, what else we got in here other than those two man lands? Looks like just a bunch of duels and just like two planes, two regular basic lands. Rough. Hopefully we won't be needing to uh, grab them because man, two is going to be not much to, to, to be art to going after. So anyways, this is what we are martyring. It looks like it is just Orzov with a potential for a Valky with her Tybalt and uh, Kiki Jiki. To make use of doubling stuff up, getting some of those into the battlefield of, uh, effects going. Because this will help get rid of stuff in graveyards. This will exile stuff until the end of turn, in which case they'll come back in as tokens. Uh, if you do it to a bulky god of lies, you'll be able to grab a creature out of his hand. Unfortunately, if you, when he leaves it, he'll give something back to them. So that kind of sucks. Uh, I can't do Lysa. Legion Angel. Yeah, I don't know. Fe I, Fe Kiki Jiki just doesn't fa this sound like great to me. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but anyways, there we go. This is Mardu Midrange. Let's give it a shot and see how well it goes. And we're playing against Mr. Baggins. I wonder if we'll be seeing that uh, Hostile Keeper or whatever his name is. We got four mana and ooh, nothing to play for first. 
Let's keep it and see how well we can make do with what we got. Uh, we'll do the Eye of the High Tyrant because it is slow. Everything else is fast. We'll go for red. We'll pop out white next. What are we doing here? Just a lot of black and reds. Nope. Pin the fang bar. That's not good for us. It's a human Z. No blocks. Boy, I needed another white, and it's nothing like that at all. Uh, discard of the two cards. Heck yeah. Ooh. Well, I, I just need to take care of that one guy. How can I take care of him quickly? Because I'm just going to go ahead and we'll pop this guy out. We can play the Celestis on our next turn. Put this out as a black. I really don't need a lot of red. No attacks. So now I can go ahead and block the fin, killing him. Otherwise, I could just Skyclave Apparition. I'll have to do less this in my next turn. Like, look at oh, look at these big guys: the Wandering Emperor, the Lights of the Forgotten. All require two white. Skyclave Apparition, two white. And the decisions you make in your second turn just come back to haunt you. Ah, Jesus. No blocks. There we go. Oh, white. What's that? Somebody's tapped? All right, we'll have to see what they're going to play. Their next card is going to inflect everything. Brutal Cathar. A lot of targets potentially to go after there. Kiki Jiki. Are you four or less from Cathar? You certainly are. Give that guy some love. Let's take an action. Yeah, whatever, we're fine. I want to play some Elspeth. Four, five, six. I got tons of mana for her. That's not good. I'm, I'm going to trust in Elspeth. I'm going to trust in her. I don't really need lands. Kiki Jiki, okay. Uh, the first thing I like to do is put out Elspeth. What is this guy up to? Yeah, don't care. Let's see.
And we win! Suck it, Bilbo Frodo Braggins. Subscribe. I are playing against uh Chris125. We got uh three mana, that's good. I like what I'm seeing here. We're going for it. Opponent goes first. Well, means we're gonna lose, but at least we'll put in a good showing. You know what I like about this? Control, control, control. I'm sorry, I just, it turns out my inner heart is Orzov. Keep. The other thing I love is Boros. So if you put those two together, Mardu. Things I almost never play Mardu. It kind of feels dirty in some way. All right, uh, what do I got? Slow, 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 lots of slow. I guess these aren't slow here. That's black, and let's just put down a little red and white. This allows us to put down an Aspirant, which will then get her killed. Yeah, with that black right there, a little direct damage. Oh, well, okay, Bulky's gonna do something horrible here. If you don't take the Sky Cully of Apparition, I will take you out. I'm also gonna Vanishing Verse you on my turn. Uh, let's see. Black. That's the way it's done, bulky lover. I'm going through my graveyard like a sucker. All right, what do we need for this? Discard a card. Ooh, what am I gonna discard? It was just a matter of picking which cards I love the most, and then getting rid of the last one. Enjoy your token. Right now I'm just thinking maybe I can bait him into putting some stuff out that I can meet hook massacre. Nah, I could kill things up to two unless I get them. I got this one, so it's up to three. Put something out. You can see the meat oak, though. You know it's coming. There we go. Now the question is, do I really want to wait? For Kiki Jiki to hit, I can always take him out the Hargra. One, two, three. Chris. Hmm. Where am I at here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. Oh. All right, Luminarch, you're going out. Probably just to be a speed bump, my friend. Yeah, we're going for a Valky. Uh, no blocks. All right, so we're putting out this one. We're gonna have to discard the high tyrant to get rid of the. And 
and Luminarch is going to have to protect us. Okay, there you go, Luminarch. Keep Tybalt alive. Touch the precious. Gotta give my fish some love. One more. There we go. All right, Chris, you should be peeing your pants because I got a Tybalt out. Oh, you're going after it. You're going after it. I can't do anything about it. You're going to have to sacrifice. Oh, good job. Oh, suck it, sucker fish. What am I grabbing here? I don't have three mana. Can't put that out. Well, that doesn't seem right now, does it? Uh, you know what? You need to pump up. I need some more defenders. How about now? No, not now. No attacks. Everything's cool. Can't play anything that way. End of turn. See, now I'm thinking because like, I can control day and night. He tries to put out another werewolf on me. I'll just turn it back into day the last second. Really, I can't do anything cool with that. Is it Tibble that's holding everything back? Well, that's a whole lot of nothing great. That's okay, it doesn't let me do the cycle. That's kind of kooky. All right, I will choke it back so that when he sends a high tyrant at me I can always block it myself uh, the problem with Tybalt is he's getting me nothing but lands and that kind of blows Nice. All right. Here we go. Give me something. Another stinky land. What is your problem? I can go like this, though. Take out the meat, the opposing meat hook. Give ourselves a nice new land right there. Tybalt, negative eight. What am I going to do with that? Exile all grab rares. That's just kind of sucks. Uh, what can you do for me? Take the action. Can't get rid of one of those. No, sorry, I need that potential for another Tybalt here. And all attack. I don't have the mana for it apparently right now. Green, sure, why not? How about now? I 
I can play you from the graveyard. You're going for it. All right, let's go see what Lulzbeth can do for us. La la. Let's give him life link. All attack. All right, don't get anything good. Not a stupid commie. Not communist. Dragon, spirit dragon. All right, I think I got him. Well, let's see, what can we do here? All right, so... Let's play this one here. Land. We'll play another one of these guys. We will. There's not much else I could do at this point. Pop this. Uh, multicolor! He's got nothing but multicolor there. Uh, I don't need that land. We're going to just hold it just in case something happens. We'll put it on Tenacious D and come on in for four points of damage at least. I think I got you, Smokey. You don't have any cards in your hand. Good game. Winner, winner, victory dinner. All right, so we've got uh, three-ish mana, four, okay. We'll keep it. All right, I'm gonna play Hagram. Yeah, I wanna be faster in a little bit, so I'm gonna start off with slow land. Then we'll be able to play this for fast, this for fast. We'll be able to get out in the Cletus, the Celestis. Uh, let's go for white. That guy I can take out any time. Let's put out the underdog. What do we think? Uh, Legion Angel? I appreciate him putting out weenies like this. Oh, this is so nice. So nice. He knows I have a meat hook. That was kind of dumb. Okay, a little bit of red. Oh, guess who cost me too much though now. Um... Let's just see what he's got in his hand.
four, huh? Oh, I got five right there. Dang it. I didn't see what I was doing. All right, there we go. Hey, I needed that, dummy. What do I care, man? We'll block the big guy. All right, let's start off by vanishing verse. God, who are we going to take out, though? I guess I can't do Helen on Elena. Well, that bites. What is she? Okay, so Skyclave Apparition can do it. Oh, because Exile takes out shields. That's why that works. Take out Planeswalker as well. Dang it, I don't have enough for four. Uh, what can I do about this? Can I do three? Yes, I can. Yeah, my problem is their deck is just that much faster than my deck. Yeah, that's that. Because I was always reacting to everything that they did. And I just couldn't get the advantage, and I was always having to respond to everything. Subscribe. All right, so here we are with Mardu mid-range. Supposedly fifth best deck in the meta currently. Let's take a look at this deck and talk about what was good about it. Um... You know, to me, to me, the best thing about the deck was the angels. Thing is, those how many angels did we see? None. We didn't see any of the angels. Um, I think that the the Kiki Jiki combo 
with um, uh, where we at there. The Skyclave operation was really good. The Kiki Jiki be able to work with the, the comes into battlefield effects, the inner battlefield, EBT, ETB effect, um, was a good way of, of wiping out other people's creatures. I'm sure they got, they got token creatures out of the deal, but usually they were way less effective than whatever the creature was in the first place. Um, Valky is just too tempting to play. Uh, I got out two Tibbles, but yeah, he was just getting wiped out. Humility is dumb. It shouldn't it just it shouldn't be in there. Uh, the Meat Hook Massacre was great, other than the fact that people could outrace it. We really needed a Doom Scar or a Blood on the Snow, um, probably instead. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Meat Hook Massacres. I think that they're uh, whenever a creature dies, effects are fantastic. You just can't count on them for being the board wipes that you need them to be. Vanishing Verse, there are way too many multicolored creatures out there right now. This is not the deck. It's not the time to be playing Vanishing Verse. So um, ultimately, this deck is made up of great cards. and But there's very little about them that work well with each other. It's just getting a bunch of them that just sort of stand alone. It's kind of like having Batman and Superman rather than having Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin work together synistically sy and come up with a great effect. Well, Batman and Superman are just two dudes that hang out and say, hey, go take that thing over there because I'm going to go take care of this thing over there. Nah. So ultimately, is this a great deck? Yes, it's really good. Is it a fun deck? Nah. And I just didn't, it just didn't tickle my fancy per se. So if you like playing with a lot of great cards, like where the cards themselves are good, then this is a fantastic deck. I mean, I, is there even a single non, like an uncommon in here? One, uh, let's keep counting. Yeah, this is, this is made by somebody who thinks that uncommons and commons don't belong in magic cards. They, they put they put a token card in there just to pretend that they were and that was the end of it so yeah it's just a it's a bunch of good cards thrown together into a deck and it's supposed to win the game I gotta say this is not a deck for me sorry it just it, yeah it isn't from a doctor Spuck second perspective it, it's it has it's a lot of the magic is gone like the cards need to feel like they want to be with each other none than the fact that we have a, a few like Legion angel and and this angel right there and Elspeth capable of putting out a bunch of angels. There's just no theme. There's no feel. They barely work with each other. This deck is just, it just isn't jiving with itself. So anyways, I hope that you have more fun with this deck than I do. But, uh, and I bet you, you will. That's it for now. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. From all of us here in the secret underground headquarters of Uncommonly Good MTG, have a great day. See you next time. Later.